Okay, let's start with the source of this mock draft. The source is Dane Brugler of The Athletic. Uh, and I don't know how many of you out there have a subscription to The Athletic. It's a quality sports source. They really, really do a good job of accurately reporting what's happening in sports. They do a good job of trying to get to know personally coaches, players, uh, front office personnel. They do a really good job. And there's a guy that works for them by the name of Dane Brugler. Uh, he is phenomenal at his craft. And every year he comes out with Brugler's big board. And I think that he is about as good at his job as anyone. Uh, yes, even Mel Kuyper. Uh, the difference is that Mel Kuyper is on ESPN on the TV all the time, where most of us don't even know what Dane Brugler looks like because he's sitting behind a keyboard. But what he's spending all of his time doing is getting to know coaches, uh, front office personnel. He's talking, he's listening to rumors, he's getting information. So he's evaluating talent, but he's also hearing what everybody about around the league is saying. So I just want to say, first off, this is somewhat credible. Second, this is somewhat insane. All right. So let's look at this mock draft from him. We're going to go down it. And pretty soon we're going to get to when the Lions are trading up from their number 18 pick. So first he has the Colts trading up to get Bryce Young of Alabama with the Bears. This is not crazy. He's having them trade number four, 35, and a 2024 first-round pick in order to get it. Makes sense for the Bears. Makes sense for them. Texans go Will Levis. Cardinals go Will Anderson Jr. Nothing better to replace TJ Watt than Will Anderson Jr. Bears go Jalen Carter. That's exactly what they need. All right. Panthers go Stroud. And then he has the Lions going Christian Gonzalez. Um, he has them going Christian Gonzalez because the dude is a freak athletically. Like he's super fast. He's going to put up uh, from all accounts, just nuts combine numbers. And so he's going to, if, if the play ball skills match the athletic skills and they do at times, um, this is a guy that could very easily be the best corner in this draft, but that's not what we're going to take our time talking about here. What we are going to take our time talking about here is the trade that happened and with who. So he has the Detroit Lions trading up to number 15, which is owned by none other than Green Bay. And here you have it, folks. The Detroit Lions via Green Bay draft Anthony Richardson, quarterback, out of Florida. Now, I told you in a recent video, if you've watched it, great. If you haven't, go watch it, that the quarterback position is not going to stop being mocked to the Detroit Lions. This is not necessarily the national media not knowing what's going on. This is them understanding we have no backup quarterback right now. What does the future look like with golf? Is golf good enough to pay 40 to $50 million a year? There has to be a backup plan. Look at the San Francisco 49ers. There was a backup plan to Jimmy Garoppolo. There was a backup plan. They drafted a young athletic rookie because they knew eventually Garoppolo wasn't going to be that great, but they also knew maybe they have the ability to take the team even further. So teams are starting to mock Detroit doing this. Here's the problem I have with this. So we're giving up 18 and 48. We're giving, we're moving up three positions in the middle of the first round, but we're also giving up a second round pick. That seems heavy. Like that seems heavy, not Uber heavy, but heavy. And just to go for Anthony Richardson, you know, Green Bay is not going to take Richardson, right? The commanders, maybe, maybe they would. The Steelers, no, they just drafted a rookie. So, and I guess anybody could go in front of us, but to trade up, I don't know if that makes sense. I understand sit there and wait until Anthony Richardson hopefully is available at 18, but here's the argument that Brugler's making. When he's talking to front office people, and some of those are in the Detroit Lions organization, what he's hearing rumors of is that the Detroit Lions love and are happy with Jared Goff as their starting quarterback. But he also knows that Brad Holmes is smart enough to realize quarterback is huge and you don't want to be stuck without one. And it's not every year that you have the resources and the means to get an elite level prospect at the quarterback position. You just don't. Sometimes you have to trade the farm in order to get it, and then you're hamstringing yourself down the line. The, the L.A. Rams gave up a ton of future capital for multiple players, right? Um, at corner, at quarterback, like they gave it up. 
They won a Super Bowl. Congratulations. But if they hadn't won the Super Bowl, it would have been so close and everybody would have been angry because now they're stuck with a team that's aging, that has people overpaid at certain positions, and you saw what happened when you have an aging team where you overpay people. A couple injuries away from a really bad season. You're a couple injuries away from a really bad season. So you want to set yourself up for success. And uh, I'm not saying I like this move. In fact, I'm saying the opposite. So if you're still saying this, I would not like the idea to trade up to get Anthony Richardson. I don't hate the move to stand pat and draft him because then you can go defense, defense in the second round. I don't hate that. Trading up, that seems rich. You're getting rid of a defender, so you end up leaving this draft with probably number six, you're getting a defensive player. Number... 48, you're getting a defensive player. You're getting one at 18. You're getting three defensive players. I'm fine with that and one quarterback. I'm not okay with getting two defensive players and a quarterback in the first two rounds. And that's where my trade up after trading down scenario comes in because I think that is an absolute real scenario where you trade down off the number six pick. Then you use the extra pick you get from that to trade back up. So you get kind of two first round picks in the early to mid teens. I think that's probably the best situation for the Lions to have. Um, and that puts them in the running for a quarterback that puts them in the running for uh, elite corners, uh, good edge players, great linebackers. Like there's a lot of players available in that spot, or maybe even sneak up on some people and draft a guard. I don't know. So anyways, let's see what we want to do here as the lions. Uh, but I just had to make a video like once again, a quarterback, here we go. Are you already sick of hearing about it or is part of you intrigued? And I want to say this. I like Jared Goff. Like, and I've said this on this channel many times. When he has a clean pocket, he is elite. He's an elite quarterback. So I don't want you coming around saying, I don't like Jared Goff. I do. I'm just wondering if I like Jared Goff enough to pay him $45 million a year. I don't know if I do. And that's not that far away. So we want to be able to have the insurance of a good backup quarterback if we decide not to pay him $45 and to continue to put a team around a quarterback on a rookie salary. That's how teams win. All right, we'll see you on the next one. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, here at this channel, we love doing Lions content, Pistons content. We love talking draft. We love talking victories. We talk about the losses. We talk about all of it. But if you're looking for a place to be your hub for Detroit Lions news, uh, look no further. We would love to have you here. We've been putting out about two videos a day on the lions. There's content galore because you guys have wanted to have it. So we've been willing to give it. So make sure you click the link, hit the subscribe. Uh, we would love to have you part of this community. Let us know what you think in the comments below. See ya.